What's up, Brad Squad? It's your boy, Jonathan Elias, here with another Brad Show Live game, Squad versus Crew. Yeah, you already know, that's right. Now, show fan Sasha Ford and team member Sydney Versick are tied. All right, so they won one game each so far. So today, we're going to see if they can break their tie going head to head in a game we're calling Claim Your Victory, Know Your Black History. Now, of course, we're playing this game in February in honor of Black History Month, but we all know Black History is a year-long celebration, all right? Black History every day. Yes. <laughs> okay? Sasha and Sydney, you guys ready? Oh, we yes. are always ready yeah. for a good combat. Sasha and I love going head-to-head -head here, so Ooh. we're ready. We're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Versus. Now, you guys have your papers and pen ready, correct? Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, let's get it started. Question number one. When did Martin Luther King Jr. deliver his I Have a Dream speech? Was it A, December 21st, 1962? B, January 19th, 1963? C, August 28th, 1963? Or D, September 9th, 1964? Are we ready? One, two, three. Oh, it is C. Both of you guys got it wrong. It is August 28th, 1963. Okay, a little history for you. Martin Luther King Jr. set a historic milestone for the civil rights movement by delivering his I Have a Dream speech to 250,000 people on August 28th, 1963 from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Now, King's speech calling for equality and freedom is one of the most iconic speeches in American history. All right, now y'all ready for number two. Go. Let's do it, let's do it. Do it. All right, Maya Angelou became the first woman and first African-American to read a poem at a presidential inauguration. Now, whose presidential inauguration did Maya Angelou speak at? Was it A, Jimmy Carter, B, Ronald Reagan, C, George H.W. Bush, or D, Bill Clinton? Ready, one, two, Three, go. Ding, ding, ding. It was D, Bill Clinton. Sydney, pizza, pizza, you got it. Okay, on January 20th, 1993, orator, poet, author, and civil rights activist Maya Angelou read her historic poem on the pulse of mourning that she was asked to compose for the inauguration of President Bill Clinton. Now, Angelou became the second poet in history and the first African-American woman to be invited to a presidential inauguration. Of course, this year, National Youth Poet Laureate Amanda Gorman became the youngest inaugural poet in U.S. history to read her poem, The Hill We Climb, for President Joe Biden's inauguration. Now, we ready for question number three. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, how many Black immigrants make up for the Black population of the United States? Is it A, 4%, B, 6%, C, 9%, or D, 12%? Are we ready? One, two, three. Uh, it is C. It is C. C, 9%. Okay, according to the New York Immigration Coalition, Black immigrants make up 9% of the U.S. Black population. The vast majority come from the following top five countries. Jamaica, 693,000. Haiti, with 654,000. Nigeria, 304,000. Ethiopia, 237,000. And Trinidad and Tobago, 171,000. Now, in New York metro area, Black immigrants make up more than one out of four Black residents, which is 28% of the population. All right. Now, before Barack Obama became the first Black president of the United States from 2009 to 2017, what was his role from 2005 to 2008? Was he A, the mayor of Chicago, B, a U.S. senator, C, U.S. House of Representatives, or D, governor of Illinois? All right, ready? One, two, three. Uh, it was D. <laughs> he was a U.S. senator. Okay, Barack Obama served three terms in Illinois Senate from 1997 to 2004 and then was elected to the U.S. State Senate. 
in November of 2004, <laughs> he took the oath of office and became the fifth African-American to serve in the Senate on January 3rd, 2005. All right. This is really schooling us, at least, Sasha. We are learning a lot today, okay? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Number five, who was the first African-American to win a Grammy? Was it A, Billie Holiday, B, Nat King Cole, C, Ray Charles, or D, Ella Fitzgerald? All amazing artists. Are we ready? One, two, three. Uh, it was D, Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> All right, a little schooling for y'all. In 1958, singer Ella Fitzgerald made history by becoming the first African-American to win not one, but two Grammy Awards for Best Female Vocal Performance for the Irving Berlin Songbook. And that was an album. And for the Best Individual Jazz Performance for the Duke Ellington Songbook, another album. So history right there. Okay, number six. Who was the first African-American to be featured on a United States postage stamp? Was it A, Martin Luther King Jr., B, Langston Hughes, C, Booker T. Washington, or D, Harriet Tubman? Ready, one, two, three. Ding, 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 pizza, pizza got it again. It is C, Booker T. Washington. It is two to zero. Oh, on April 7th, 1940, the post office department issued a stamp honoring African-American educator Booker T. Washington. He was born 1856, died 1915. Born from slavery in Halesford, Virginia, Washington served as a role model for other struggling African-Americans and as founder of Alabama's Tuskegee Normal Industrial School, renamed Tuskegee Institute in 1937. Big ups to Booker T. Washington. Now, number seven, Patty McDaniel, the first African-American to win an Oscar, one for what movie? Was it A, Gone with the Wind, B, South Pacific, C, Casablanca, D, Guess Who's Coming for Dinner? Okay, are we ready? One, two, three. Ding, 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 Gone with the Wind, it is a, woo! Three to zero. This is wild. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. In February 1940, Hattie McDaniel won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her portrayal as Mammy in Gone with the Wind at the 12th Academy Awards. Now, the ceremony was held at the Coconut Grove nightclub in the Ambassador Hotel. McDaniel then was not allowed to sit at the Gone with the Wind table due to the hotel's strict no blacks policy. The film's producer had to fight to have McDaniel allowed into the building at all. Now, after McDaniel, the second black winner for Best Supporting Actress wasn't awarded until 50 years later when Whoopi Goldberg won for her portrayal of Oda May. Brown in 1990 critically acclaimed film, Ghost. All right, now number eight. Which black major league baseball player has the most recorded home runs? Is it A, Jackie Robinson, B, Hank Aaron, C, Reggie Jackson, or D, Barry Bonds? We ready? One, two, three. Uh, it is D, Barry Bonds. So in his 22 year duration playing for both the Pittsburgh Pirates and San Francisco Pirates, Barry Bonds holds the record not only as an African American with the most home runs in the MLB, but as a player with the most home runs in history with a total of 762 home runs. So last question, it is worth double. Okay, you know how I like to do it. We have number nine. Kamala Harris is the first black woman to be vice president. Now she's part Indian and part what? The A, Haitian, B, Ethiopian, C, Jamaican, or D, Trinidadian. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Ding, ding, ding! Sasha Ford gets it. No, oh, she finally. Is definitely 
<laughs> yes, we already know she is Jamaican. Okay, Kamala Harris's father, Donald Harris, is an economist and professor emeritus at Stanford University. He was originally born in Jamaica in 1938 and came to America in the 1960s to get his PhD at the University of California, Berkeley, and eventually became a naturalized U.S. citizen. Yes, but this goes to pizza pizza you are the winner of this congratulations 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 us. Pizza thank you pizza. Pizza. final score pizza pizza you got three sasha ford you got two you were so close because you got that double but it wasn't enough it wasn't enough not this time maybe next time right. sasha you're the best you're the best opponent i love thank i love when you. we play all right everybody we love you guys make sure you let us know in the messages if you want to be a contestant this is a lot of fun all right all right yes it is back to the show